In this video, we'll be looking at finding the surface area when a parametric curve is rotated about either the x-axis or the y-axis. So we want to just start by recalling our surface area formula um, that we learned for some function y equals f of x. So recall that if we were going to do a rotation about the x-axis, okay, then we were thinking about um, our little pieces here that we would generate by taking a line segment about the x-axis would be these sort of band shapes and I would have some sort of um, radius here that would be a vertical radius so my surface area was equal to this integral of 2 pi times the radius which in this case if it's vertical is y and then times my arc length ds okay if I was gonna go about the y-axis, okay, then I was thinking about having a line segment here that I'd rotate about the y-axis creating this band shape and I would have a radius that would be a horizontal radius. So this would be an integral of 2 pi x, or x would be that horizontal radius times my arc length um, ds. Okay, so for our parametric curves, parametric curves here, that ds component okay, is the arc length in parametric form that we found in our previous video. So this will be dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. Okay? And for a parametric curve, this y here, okay, so if you have a parametric curve given by um, x equals f of t and y equals g of t here, okay, then the y part would be g of t for going about the x-axis. The x part for going about the y-axis would be f of t. Okay, so it's taking the same formula that we had before, but just putting it in terms of our parametric form. Notice that unlike what we had to deal with before when we first did surface area, where I could sometimes have um, my surface area with respect to x or with respect to y, so I actually had sort of four different oops, scenarios that could happen, here the surface area will always just be with respect to t. So there's really only two cases that we have to consider, whether we're going about the x-axis or about the y-axis. Okay, so maybe to put this together, about the x-axis, we'll now have that our surface area is an integral from alpha to beta of 2 pi times g of t times the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt and about the y-axis okay we'll have this surface area is an integral from alpha to beta, oops, beta of 2 pi f of t and then again times the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared and we have the same conditions here on our f and g that we had for arc length that f prime and g prime need to be continuous and we need to look at um, just having this part of the curve traced out just once before we do the the rotation okay so let's look at an example i'm interested in finding the exact area of the surface obtained by rotating the curve given by x equals cosine cubed, y equals sine cubed, for theta between 0 and pi over 2 about the x-axis. So this is the same curve that we had in the previous example where we found the arc length of the whole curve was just 6, but now I'm taking just the portion of the curve between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, remember this was um, theta equals 0 was here, which gave us the point um, 1 comma 0 and theta equals pi over 2 is up here. That gives us the point 0 comma um, 1. Okay. So we're interested in rotating this portion of the curve here about the x-axis. Okay. So we're going to have our surface area is equal to an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 2 pi times that vertical um, radius component, so that will be our sine cubed theta, 
the y component. Okay, um, and then times the square root of dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared. So my dx d theta will be 3 cosine squared theta times negative sine theta squared, and then my dy d theta will be 3 sine squared theta times cosine theta squared d theta. So that's my complete setup for my surface area. So now I need to look at evaluating this. Um, because I am in that interval from 0 to pi over 2, this is the same thing that we saw in the, um, the previous problem with the just finding the arc length, okay, where I had simplified this square root over the interval from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, If we expand that out, we saw that we could factor out um, a 9 uh, cosine squared sine squared, and then we had that times the sine squared plus cosine squared, so the sine squared plus cosine squared became 1, and then this square root part here simplified to 3 cosine theta sine theta. Okay, so we'll say that that work is from um, what we did in example 6 in the previous video. Okay, so what does that leave us with? So we can pull this um, 2 pi here out in front. So I've got 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, oh, also times this 3. So I actually can pull out a 6 pi out in front. And then I have sine to the 4th theta times cosine theta d theta. Okay, so it looks like I can do a u substitution here. So we can let u be equal to sine theta, so that our du is cosine theta d theta. Okay, so we have 6 pi times the integral. Now I'm going to want u limits here. So notice that when theta is 0, u would be sine of 0 or 0. When theta is pi over 2, I'll have sine of pi over 2 or 1. So this will be u to the 4th times du. So this will be 6 pi times u to the 5th over 5, evaluated from 0 to 1. So we'll end up with 6 pi over 5 is the value of our surface area of this curve when we rotate about the x-axis. Okay, so now we've seen several examples of um, applying various calculus applications um, to our parametric curves. Let me know if you have any questions.